to me, my precious child. I've called your name. Nothing can take you from my hand. I'm still the same. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome once again. And first of all, let me wish you all a very happy Easter. Though it may feel at this moment in time that isn't a lot to celebrate, and I understand that. However, let me just uh, share with you a few thoughts on this Easter Sunday, particularly in the light of the resurrection of Jesus and all that that can mean for each and every one of us, and the hope that it can bring, even in the most testing and difficult times. But before I do that, I want to read something to you that actually was written on Harry Potter's mum and dad's grave, and on occasion gets read out at funerals too. So bear with me for a second. I'm going to read something from a letter that was written to the church in Corinth, in Greece, many years ago by a guy called Paul. And he was trying to help them to understand something of what the Easter story was all about. It comes from uh, the first letter that we have that he wrote to them and chapter 15. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read uh, a couple of little excerpts from it. And, and the title is The Resurrection Body. This is what he wrote to them. Someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? Oh, how foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds have another, fish yet another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendour of the heavenly bodies is one kind. The splendour of the earthly body is another. The sun has one kind of splendour, the moon another kind, the stars another, and stars differ in their splendour. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, but it's raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonour, but it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it's raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, then there will also be a spiritual body. And so, this makes the trait saying true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? And where, O oh death, is your sting? Just in case you're wondering, and if you've ever seen the films, that last little phrase, you get a glimpse of it on the tombstone or the headstone of Harry Potter's mum and dad. Now I know, I know, you're probably thinking at this moment in time, hang on a minute, where's all the stuff on Easter day about um, empty tombs and Jesus going around and people bumping into him and meeting him and having uh, situations where they, they kind of experience him on Easter day? Where's all that stuff? Where's, where's all that Easter story stuff? Where's it gone to? Well, on the day when we celebrate and remember the crucified Jesus rising from the dead two days later. Bear with me for a few moments. You see, at the beginning of that chapter, chapter 15, that Paul wrote to this church, um, he explains to them and proclaims to them the incredible and amazing good news of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But as he's writing this, it's clear that the folks he's writing with, writing to, sorry, are struggling with this. They're, they're having difficulty to get their heads around the fact that there could be a man who was resurrected from the dead. 
And they're finding it harder to believe that this could be possible, that it wasn't just for one man, but when they put their faith and trust in this man, it could be for them as well. You see, in the Greek world, back in those days, their mindset was very different. Well, maybe in some circles, not that dissimilar, to be honest, but back then, they believed in the immortality of the soul, but not the immortality of the body. The body and the soul, because of how they viewed the world, was to be disconnected from each other. You see, the way they viewed the world was this. The world and everything physical was inherently bad and evil. And yet, the spiritual side of it was inherently good and pure. So what they aspired to do was to get rid of all their earthly and natural urges and desires, to put them to one side, to, to purge themselves of it, and to aspire and desire those things that were good and pure and spiritual. But there was a separation, a separation between the, the natural, as it were, the natural world and the spiritual world. The news to them that this man Jesus physically rose from the dead would have absolutely made their minds explode, as I've said. A possibility that they too could experience something for themselves of the same, they really, really could not comprehend. And you know, you're probably sitting there thinking, and I find that difficult too. And I understand that. So, okay, they say, how does this work then? How, how, how can this be possible? How can we understand this? So Paul takes them back to the natural world, to the created world. But the first thing he points them to is this, that as a God who creates both the physical world and the spiritual world, one is not better than the other. This God who created everything understands and, and wants us to understand that it's equal. There is no better or worse. The created and the spiritual, both are valid, both are valuable, both are necessary. Because he is the creator of all things. And so what Paul does is he, he points them towards uh, the natural world around them. He says, well, look, you know, let's keep it simple here. Look how nature works. You sow seeds, you plant bulbs, and, and you kind of like, in a sense, give it a burial. You, you, you stick it under the ground. Uh, but from this grows something wonderful, something that looks very, very different to the seed and, and very, very different to some of the bulbs, but is completely different on another level. It kind of comes from the same thing but looks very different. Something incredible, something wonderful, something beautiful. I'm sure at this moment in time, given that if you have more time on your hands than normal, I'm sure there's some gardening going on and I'm sure you're seeing some of the things that you've planted over the years, again, bursting from the ground. Myself and Philippa, for the last uh, few years, have, have bought some things to stick in the garden. We we bought ourselves um, one of those steel milk churns. Uh, we bought ourselves an old bin, steel bin, a, a mop bucket, and, and we also bought a tin bathtub, uh, all for planting up and, and having things in. The, the, the tin bathtub is the most recent one, and it's, it's kind of not big enough for an adult to have a bath in, but it's one of those that you used to put in the old days in front of the fire, with pour hot water into it, and have a good old wash in it. You could get a child or a, or a baby in it, but, but you couldn't sort of sit an adult in it. Anyway, so we, we bought this tub, we filled it with compost and, and other bits and bobs, and we've planted garlic and onions. Well, recently we've, um, I, we covered it up, protect it, because it was cold, obviously, at times, but recently we started to see things sprouting up, and we've got high hopes that at some point later in the year, we're going to enjoy Lots of garlic, so I apologise right now for, for the smell that might be around at some points in the future. Uh, and some onions as well. We'll see how that goes. We'll try some other things at some other point in time. But the point is, that is something like um, a resurrection experience, you could say. Another 
uh, way of looking at it could be this. Um, a, mo uh, a caterpillar wraps itself in a cocoon. It's kind of like a tomb, isn't it? And, and then later comes out of that cocoon and it's sort of the same, but it's not the same because now we have a beautiful, incredible, spectacular butterfly. Kind of a death and a kind of a resurrection. And you could say the same is true for Jesus, that he himself had a human body. It was a body that particularly towards the end of his life was weak. It was, it was battered to bits. It died and it was buried. And yet two days later, here we are on Easter Day and we are here because we celebrate and remember that two days later, he rose from the dead. He, he was meeting people, bumping into people, talking to people. People were experiencing him in a new way. He was the same, but he wasn't quite the same. He, he, he was physical, people could touch him. And, and yet there were still differences in the resurrected Jesus. We live in an analytical and a scientific age. You could even say we live in a cynical age. And people might still be asking the question, well, how can this idea of a future life and the possibility that somehow or other it could be physical, how, how, you know, isn't that just ridiculous in the light of what science tells us? Is that not just um, eccentric? Is it not just something there for a few cranks? who want to believe in something. Well, we all know that one day we will die. That is an absolute cast iron guarantee. Some of us will be buried. Most of us will probably be cremated. Um, but however that happens, we hope and we trust and we believe that we have the possibility of something beyond this through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We have a possibility that maybe our minds find difficult to grasp and it is a step of faith to put our trust in a God who through Jesus can not just give us a life beyond this but actually that somehow that too can be physical, that, that, that what God did in Jesus on that very first Easter Sunday, he can do in and for and to us as well. That the God who creates us can recreate us, can hold us until that point in time when all things will be brought together in him and that we will be a part of all that. Our bodies, our bodies that we experience aches and pains for, for many of us and for some of us. We, we experience debilitating illnesses and diseases and conditions. And for some of us, those diseases and conditions are, are terminal. Um, we're going through a period of time where a virus is, is affecting our world and our lives greatly. And yet we have this hope. We have is possibility that God can do something for and in us that is wonderful, that is amazing, and that is spectacular. A body that at this moment in time is fit for this place can become a body that be fit for eternity. So on this Easter Sunday, with this Easter promise and this Easter hope that we have, let us embrace that possibility. Take that step of faith into the possibility that God can do this, that God desires to do this, that God wants us with him to experience this eternity when we put our faith and our hope and our trust in what he did in Jesus that he can do in us too. So on this Easter Sunday, I do want to wish you a very happy Easter. Let's 
look to see what we can find to celebrate during this time and look beyond this time to what God offers and to what God desires to bring into each and every one of our lives. My shackles you tossed away My sin is so far away As far as the east from the west The battles may still go on Separate